Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today's guest is really just going to bring so much joy to you because you're going to be able to identify with so many things that has rocked his world. And also he's going to share some tips and inspiration that's going to make your life a whole lot better. He's a writer and avid outdoorsman. He has battled depression and severe anxiety. Um, and with that in 20, 20 at the beginning after a failed suicide attempt. And yeah, we are going to go there today. Um, he began to take on these mental health challenges. And this is what I want to empower you to do while you're listening. If you know someone or if you yourself are experiencing something, we want to be that resource that helps you to move forward. But through his journey, he's become really committed to sharing his story in the hope of inspiring others and really raising awareness to the difficulties that go along with suffering alone. And that's usually where many people find themselves is alone in a situation like this. So with that, he had a mission that just gave birth to Project Mindfully Outdoors. And what happened was it got started with a simple blog and and then it continued on into growing into this wonderful podcast under the same name, Project Mindfully Outdoors. And this really gave our guest the voice within a community to be able to connect and help those struggling with mental health. And we're going to bring him on now. With us today is Mike Martin. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I am really excited because you are speaking out and sharing so much about your own journey. And oftentimes people just don't do that. They suffer alone in silence and don't know who they can trust to talk to and be able to get help. And so with what you're doing, sharing your own experience where people can listen and read and identify they're already building a trust with you and they have a resource. So tell me, tell me the beginning of your story. Uh, you know, it's, it's a long story. So, um, it's got a lot of patterns in it that repeated over and over again. So finally at the end of a uh, nine year marriage, I was left divorced, homeless and completely alone. And before that, it was a matter of being, misunderstood and still being alone anyway mm -hmm. so after the as the after the homeless part kicked in I was living in my truck and also sleeping in a old uh, deadfall deer blind I uh, still managed to keep a job and then once the divorce came and I was told it was coming it was kind of the final straw and uh I remember the last words that were spoken to my face was that I had nothing to offer my family. Oh, and that's was, really challenging to hear. And the, this was, you know, working every day and keeping just enough to eat and keep gas in the truck, giving the rest to them where they were at. And I remember distinctly after those words were said and she walked away, sitting under the tree in the parking lot, this conversation happened. And at that point, it kind of, it just seemed surreal. Mm -hmm. And next thing I realized, I was driving back to the deadfall blind that I was sleeping in. I took a bunch of pills, thought I was going to overdose, and that was going to be it. I had mentioned in a final communication that that was going to be my last night. I woke up the next day, and I still managed to just continue pushing forward in life as if I go to work. And realizing as I was driving to work that I survived, I became so paranoid and scared someone's gonna find me and I'd end up in a hospital somewhere worse. And I remember parking about three miles away from work, walking those last three miles. And the only part of my work day I remember was, hey, if anybody looks for me, you haven't seen me. Mm -hmm. And that was distinctly all I remember. And then I went back after work, I got back to the place I was sleeping, and I remember kind of saying, you know, I tried really hard last night, and it didn't work, so there's got to be some kind of point, some kind of purpose that I'm still here. Yes. And when I did that, 
it wasn't exactly a quick process, but a couple of days of just stumbling around scared of my own shadow, whatnot. I remember being uh, at work listening to a podcast that I guess kind of slowly was helping me through things. And they had featured a writer named Ryan Holiday, and he was talking about one of his books. He brought up he brought up a stoic uh, quote from Marcus Aurelius about how adversity is just an opportunity to highlight who you are and shine. Yeah. And slowly, I started to take that to heart. And when I did that, I kind of realized I need to make some major changes in my life. So that was quite a process and the blow that you had was really heavy. Had you at that time also had other challenges going on that just, this was the culmination and sort of the last straw, or was this really what was really overwhelming? There's only been two times in my life that I had tried to attempt suicide. That was mm-hmm. the second. The other time, and just like any other situation I come up, I've always had a back plan for it. Okay. And if you really want to turn the clock back, the first uh, time that I had told it was pretty significant too, because as a child until I want to say at least probably 11, 12 years ago, I was a self injured uh, cutter. And that was always my means to stay alive. Whenever the urges and desire would come up, I would technically remove them from my body physically. And there was a day that that didn't, it just didn't do the trick. And I had everything set and for whatever reason, I just decided to reach out and called a friend and they helped me through it. So it's been an ongoing cycle and finally, I hit a point with that when it was like the wake-up call. Like mm-hmm. it was just time to, time to realize that I needed to do something about what I was doing because it wasn't working. So that's and, really, yeah, that's really important. And then, uh, and actually one of the very first step, like probably one of the first, within the first five episodes of the podcast, there was a whole two episodes that were devoted to self-injury and self-harm. Okay. There's quite a lot of story and content to exactly how that challenge went. I can I can understand the journey in self-awareness and making changes. Oftentimes I think that fear to make a change is just as great as the fear of what the situation is at hand. Absolutely. It's, it's not an easy thing to do and to take it on alone. See, I, I always had this feeling of disconnection and feeling like I was misunderstood and alone. Okay. And yet I still had people around me that I could I guess, make myself believe, understood, or cared. When in reality, it was I put myself in the position and they took advantage of that because, you know, I was not even enough to believe, hey, these people care. And then to be completely alone with that, you know, within my truck and nobody around me to say, hey, there's at least somebody there. Mm -hmm. It really made me stop and look at myself. And that was kind of one of the defining moments at the start of the journey when I realized I needed to change basically my life, you know, everything from the ground up. That's, and, that's huge. Yeah, and it was a very scary situation. In fact, uh, I remember one of the first significant moments along the first couple of days in that process it it sounds so in, insignificant to everybody else, but in that moment, I remember getting off work and being a night that I had just got paid and I had to figure out what I was going to dinner that night. Okay. Making, making that decision for myself was so hard. I had such a panic attack over 
I don't, it took me three and a half hours just to drive to a, you know, drive through and get something to eat. It's interesting that you say that because I think oftentimes we take advantage of our daily routine and how hard those decisions can be. And I can give you a great example in the sense of if you're with your significant other and you both have had a really rough day. Neither of you want to cook. And you're like, okay, let's go get something to eat. And one says, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to eat. And the other one says, well, it's whatever you want. And then there's a conflict that arises. So, absolutely. so that just in itself, when you do have somebody based on all of the pressures that are going on around or just the stress of the day and things like that, then to have a situation that's been presented to you where life really had not been where it was now and you're having to do that, it's really understandable how, how difficult it would be like, okay, what do I do now? What is my next step? And do I even know what I want to eat? Because normally you're get, there's a give and take in a relationship. And so we, we just right. we do, and now it's all about you and maybe that's really not what you wanted was to be all about you. Right. And that was kind of where I found myself was in a position where I was, you know, in my opinion, thrown into this new reality that I wasn't ready to get want or whatever, but I didn't have the option of staying stuck in an imaginary place where I would never be again. Right. And, and then to, to go even further with it and share like the first triumphant moment in that process was one of the first days of spring, I got my boat out and granted it took me a little while to actually get, you know, get it in the water and everything because of the anxiety of dealing with adjusting to being alone. But I spent, you know, the afternoon on the water and probably scored the ba- biggest bass in my life and it was a triumphant win. Wow. So do you think that started making a change there when it it was something really good came out of going alone? I think it was. I mean, my whole outdoor career beforehand was a lot of it was spent, you know, on my own and whatever, seeking out that solitude. However, it was kind of different then because it was, uh, it was kind of uncomfortable being solitude in the woods and on the water and dealing with the thoughts because a lot of it I didn't want to face. And then when it, I was thrust into this position where I'm facing every, every everyday life and everything else, that solitude became a lot easier to accept because I, I've learned how to deal with you know, managing certain thoughts out to something that I can understand and utilize. So do you think that before someone gets to a point where they are forced into being alone, that they should take time to be able to go and be alone with themselves on a regular basis so that they can start thinking about what's going on internally, their thoughts, their feelings, and then also just sort of understanding their own identity and how to relieve stress before it gets to a different point where you're alone and now you really don't know what to do. I think it's not something I'm going to suggest you dive headfirst in the deep end of the pool to do, but if you go and you start slow, it's definitely a good thing. It's a good process to be able to understand yourself and it'll provide a different spot. Uh, a different way to view things because you get kind of an outside view of what's going on around you okay. instead of just being in the you know the hustle bustle your blinders are on and you're go 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 you get the opportunity to stop and you get to kind of examine not only the surroundings but exactly you know why you're responding to it so let me ask you another question because I've heard so many different opinions on this and they usually come from 
people who are speaking or they've written um, a book, but maybe not necessarily have been in a position like yourself. And so I want to ask you from firsthand knowledge, would you think that being, understanding that alone time and sort of grounding yourself is better outside than it is at home or on a computer or in front of a television set? I mean, just actually in nature. I think it is because you're eliminating all the distractions for one. For two, it gives you an opportunity to kind of put things into a different context. You're wrapped up in say a large body of water and you're just that small piece floating on top of it or you're within the woods around all the big, you know, big large trees and again, you're just there. And it kind of, I don't know, it gives you a little bit of a different um, kind of stance uh, on life and just, you know, things aren't as big within your eyes and your world is you make them out to be. There's a lot of different ways you can interpret. That's and a it, really it good point. And it definitely gives you the opportunity to uh, to see and experience a whole lot of different things because there's no trip outside that's ever going to be the same. Okay, I've got to just stop right there because what you're saying is really important and that no trip is ever going to be the same. Your journey out, outdoors, whatever adventure you're going to take is always going to have a varying degree in, and also in how it impacts you depending on what's going on in your life. So not only is the scenery going to change because of the different seasons, the time of day, things that are going on, but things going on in your own world. And some of the things that are really pointed out when people are undergoing different types of therapy, whether it's from a mentor or from a counselor or a psychologist, psychiatrist, they will tell you, you want to get in touch with all of your five senses. That's very true. That's something that I've started to understand a lot more throughout this process is that whole feeling of finding wholeness and staying in tune with everything. And it's, hard, it's something that I find is hard to do when you're caught up in the normal everyday hustle and bustle. So when you get the opportunity to drift outside and go for a hike or even just to you know, stop and sit down on a log or anything, just watch what comes through your line of view. It gives you a real common feel. Uh huh. For me, for me, when I go out, it's like as soon as I open the door and I step on the ground, instantly I'm in that room. Everything else that's on my shoulders or weighing me down just it evaporates. That's really interesting. And when you say the minute your feet hit the ground, there's even techniques called grounding so that you go out barefooted and you feel the earth and your feet and you are really able to absorb everything that's going on outside of a chaotic world into a peaceful in that. I mean, that's the idea. But I think something that you said too is important is that you're saying that for you, this is where, where you're finding things peaceful. I know for me, if I'm next to a beach and I'm hearing the roaring of the waves and I can hear the seagulls, the, you know, the animals in the distance and um, the smell the, of the salty air, all of those things allow me to go in my brain and take a completely different perspective of anything that's going on in my world. I mean, I am completely captivated, captivated by how amazing and how great things are outside of things that are, are man-made. And then you get to think about how much, how is it that all of these things came into being and how were they created that all of these little intricacies and you're, as you're looking around and all your senses are working, you're seeing things that take you away from things that have consumed your mind but not everybody can get to that one spot. So 
I think what you're with what you're doing and talking about being outdoors, there are other areas that can provide the same type of onness, and it takes you away from your own internal pain to the peace. Oh, absolutely. It, I mean, yeah, it's called Project Mindfully Outdoors, and I put the emphasis on the outdoors because that's what works for me. And I found it's been a very good uh, icebreaker as well as actually a physical opportunity to connect and help people. In fact, uh, when, I, when I first started the uh, project, I had posted a thing on uh, social media. Hey, if somebody needs somewhere to hunt or if somebody just go out so they're not alone, you know, come on, let's go. And uh, I don't tell the story very often, but I did get a response. And the guy that I ended up going and taking out hunting, he was uh, a couple of steps further back on the path than I was in the current moment. Okay. So he was he was having a really rough go of it. And just that day of you know hanging out, blasting and looking for a deer, it made a difference. And he's I've still talked to him every once in a while and he's doing much better now. So that day I feel like kind of got him through a real rough spot. And you know, like I said, we put the emphasis on the outdoors as something to do. However, it's not just about the outdoor community. It's about, you know, the community and the world as a whole, because whether you're a sportsman or you sit at home and you sew and you cook for a hot, there's so many people out there in this world that suffer silently because, number one, they don't know how to express it. They're scared to express it. And then number two, they just feel like nobody's going to take the time to understand it. It's interesting that you share that because I think so many people feel, no matter how many people are around them, they feel isolated and that their problem is bigger than what anybody else could kind of empathize with. Most people don't want sympathy. They want someone that can say, I understand where you're at and here's some great things that you can do to make it better, or I'll work with you along the way. I'll hang out with you, even if nothing is said. And the biggest challenge, and I've heard this so many times when it comes to mental health, is that everybody is saying, we have to overcome the stigma. We have to overcome the stigma, but nobody's out there helping people overcome the stigma. So, no. so that's um, where you come in and you are just being as candid and raw. People need to hear this. Absolutely, they do. And, you know, it's, it's not something that's easy to just up and talk about. And it's, I'm sure it's not something that's easy to hear either because, you know, nobody wants to believe that that kind of stuff happens in the world and people really deal with and suffer for it. But at the same time, I don't feel we should be looking down at each other because there's challenges that each of us have. We all have obstacles we all have challenges and we're all going to face adversity so i guess it, it's just more difficult and more taxing on us on our soul than it may be for somebody else but taking the time to understand and you know just lend a hand that's the important part that's what's going to get everybody else to it. so true that is so true and it's amazing once you connect with somebody who knows where you're at or can understand it, there's so much growth in that. And I can tell you just from working with so many people over the years that the biggest thing is not having a support system. And the initial challenge is actually getting one because most really often, is. yeah, most often times people don't want to share with their spouse, they don't want to share with their children, with their parents, no one that they're struggling with something inside based on fear, whatever the fear could be, humiliation, whether someone's going to discredit what they're feeling or make them out to appear as 
really more off than normal. But like you said, everybody at different stages in life come across, they come across adversity and the strongest person, depending on if the circumstances and the stars line up the way they do, there could be, that could just be the, a tipping scale for somebody, for somebody who's never even had a concern with long-term mental health challenges. The, The circumstances can just be there and, and something just happened. Lots of variables. In fact, uh, the biggest variable that you can think of that nobody expected was that of COVID-19. And over the last couple of years, there's been massive amounts of challenges in this arena. And a lot of it has to do with this cause and this effect, whether it was the cause of the virus itself or because of not being able to work anymore or having to go into isolation, but whatever these different things were that people didn't see coming, there was an effect over here. And it's had a really challenging effect for many people that weren't prepared thinking I've never had a problem before and I probably never will. But what you said is so important is how there are challenges that come up throughout different stages of our life. Some people, it starts as a child and it can go for a long, long, long time. And some people, it doesn't hit. There's even medical conditions that don't hit until their thirties. Right. Okay. So and see, I think, uh, I think we're my project and people that work, that work along the same line that have the first hand experience is so important is because back when I first made the effort to get into getting professional help I was told I have an illness okay I don't have an I don't have an illness I have challenges that don't exactly fall under you know that are a little bit more difficult than others Mm -hmm. and you get to tell me that I have an illness because you've read that in a book doesn't really work that way as opposed to when I come to somebody, I'm approachable because, you know what, I've been there. I'm still Mm -hmm. battling it. I'm still going through it. I can relate to you. I don't have the big words that, you know, the medical doctor may have for you, but I know it's not an illness. I know it's a stage in life that you're at, and it's something that you can work through and you can deal with. Because when so many people hear the word illness, it feels like it's terminal. It's like... I have to jump in because you are so right on target. I like, I want to say this so importantly that especially for those that are watching and listening, you don't have to accept the word illness. You don't have to accept anything other than you're facing a challenge. And these are the, the obstacles that are needed to go around to move beyond, because I have to agree a hundred percent with you. And that when someone is given a label, that label within itself can cause somebody to go into a direction that they weren't going to go into. Cause now they're saying, well, this is what I've been told. So, you know what? That must be right. Yep. And then they, they study up on what this label is. And all of a sudden symptoms they weren't having before can come up because our mind is that powerful. It's almost like a sugar placebo. If somebody says to you, you're taking this and it's going to help you get better. And you wholeheartedly believe that these, this is the miracle. And it turns out to be a sugar pill, but it works. That's, that's just the strength of the mind. Absolutely. Our mind is very, very strong. It is. And, you know, because I mean, when I was told that I was still in the midst of I guess being pretty much not coherent anyway with the whole mental breakdown and everything. And after I hung up the phone from that session, I kind of thought to myself, I was like, so if I have an illness, should I just not, you know, work and just stay in my truck and be ill? Right. It it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And then I, a few weeks later, connected with a different counselor that actually basically challenged me to, you know, face up to the fact that 
I have obstacles that I have to sort through. Mm -hmm. And instead of telling me, you know, it's this, this, and this, it's, hey, how do you perceive it? And you can bounce your ideas off. I love and it. That, and that's the whole concept here is it doesn't matter if we're on the water or in the woods, whatever. You approach me and you're having difficulties. Okay. How can I help you figure them out? I'm not, nobody's here to tell you because it's, you know, it's your life. You're the one that's living it. However, it's healthy and it's good to balance ideas off of the safe space. Yes. And that ends up triggering once that conversation's over and the wheels start going in your head that triggers those hard questions that you have to find the answers for on your own. And it leads to conversations within yourself where you're the sole audience. So it's going to be the truth. And that truth, when it comes out, is going to propel you to the next step on the path. So true. That's so true. I want to share something too. There's going to be a lot of people who have been told they have a mental illness or despite not being able to have heard you and I talk about changing verbiage because verbiage is huge. But let's say that there's somebody that's watching or listening and has been told that I want to share something that I think is really something to think about. And that is that illness doesn't mean finality. Illness means something that needs to get treated. So if we're in a position and someone says that, then even if that person is not at the point where they're understanding that really it's a better choice of words would be, be a little bit more helpful right now, but to take that and say, okay, so if I had an illness like the flu, I would go down and get these vitamins first before I tried this. So if someone were to say that to us, then we need to be thinking, okay, what might I need? What nutrients do I need that is going to help me internally, brain, emotional, physical, they will start giving me maybe more energy or maybe, maybe it's sometimes people are just deficient in B vitamins and I'll start taking a B12 or a this and that in itself. So if somebody comes up and says that, or somebody that's in a professional community says that I want us to not take that label and say, that means I, this is finality and that this is how I'm going to be diagnosed for forever. I mean, there are some situations where it takes a long time to overcome something, but in the meantime, it is something to say, okay, I'm going to treat this, this way. And, you know, it's funny the way that you put that, when I think back to how my steps have gone, because you say the vitamin B, uh, vitamin B thing, I could say one of the first things that I needed was actual sleep. And uh -huh. through counseling, I was turned on to the idea of using, of trying meditation, using that as a process to get sleep. Sure. Well, sure. I, I tried it, never once used it for sleep. It became an everyday aspect of my life, the mindfulness and the meditation. Okay. And it, and it has made a huge world of difference. And that was kind of like the first uh, real groundbreaking leap forward that I took. And I just always find it funny when I think about how I stumbled on it was, hey, try this for sleep. But I've never once in my life used it to sleep. It was just kind of that big hurdle that I needed. So I, it's amazing. It's so amazing to think about that because the, there are just so many different things that are available to us and it may not come out exactly like what you said, this use for this, it came out to be an overall life changer, game changer right here. And so it's important to be thinking about those things that are available to us and, um, and utilize them. And you do this, you talk about this on your show, you talk about different strategies, you talk about 
not only your own personal challenges, but you have guests on that share some things that are going to be really, really advantageous to your viewers as well. Right. And to me, there's always a lesson to be learned in the universe and the struggle. There's always something you can look back and gain some kind of knowledge, even if it's just a simple sentence. I persevered through that. That's mm -hmm. key. And that's important. And when I do uh, my episodes that are called From the Field, which are every Monday, those are me taking experiences that I've lived through, not only sharing a story about how I got there, about how I processed and worked through it, but also th there's a takeaway of what I learned from it. And I feel that's kind of important because it can kind of help you by being in that. It's kind of like putting a, wave, a waypoint on a digital map. It's something okay. that you can click to and it'll show you, you know, the steps that you get to get that I took to get there. You can apply to your own, you know, to your own journey kind of loosely and however it really fits in with you. I think that's fantastic because that's one of the biggest things that I think is a challenge. Biggest thing. Somebody says, okay, let it go let it roll off your back. Forget about it. The question is on that, that kind of a statement, how? Because if I knew how, I already would have done that. And I would have already like moved beyond this little hiccup that I'm having. If I would have known the steps to take that were going to make a difference. And Nobody's told me them. They just say, let it go. How? Big, That's big it. thing. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I don't know, through the, the playing around and studying a philosophy and whatever, I've kind of learned that's like the important aspect of it is you're taking these figures from the past and the words that they left. And it's kind of showing you a little bit of a roadmap based on you know, yeah, their experiences were a lot different than what we're engaged in now. However, the words they left show you the knowledge of how they got through it. Uh -huh. And you can, you can tweak those words and those stories to fit your life in every day, in the everyday world. And when you do that, you're building that map that's kind of guiding you along so you can, you know, make it through that process. And even beyond that, it's always good to, have, it's not necessarily, how do I say it? It's always good to kind of have a milestone or something to set engage your, yourself against. Yes. And it, yeah. kind of, it gives you an opportunity to do that, to have somebody to look up to as a mentor, whether they're, you know, alive and in person with you or just the words that are left behind. It gives you something to, to look forward to look to for that inspiration as well as that marker to see if you're keeping yourself on on the right path i think that's so important you have to give yourself these achievement self-achievement awards for reaching different parts in your journey because really Absolutely. nobody else is going to do it but you you are your best advocate for yourself and if you're not speaking up for yourself, even if it's just your, your own, you're talking to yourself, not just speaking up to other people for yourself, but just to yourself, your self-talk and saying, Hey, guess what I did? I made it. Look at this. That means I can go a little bit further, Absolutely. I can do a little bit more than what I thought I could do. And one of the biggest key things though, is I'm going to go back to part of the beginning of your story where you said, when you woke up, you said, well, I must have a purpose. There's, there's a reason here. So this is something that I think is really huge. And part of understanding our purpose and our reason is getting up when we don't want to get up and doing some of the things that we have to do and then rewarding ourselves for doing that. We live on a reward based sort of lifestyle. And so these achievements that we do don't often become 
rewarded or even acknowledged when we become an adult. And even as children, some of the things that they have going on, they're rewarded when it's not time for them to get an award. So there's this kind of confusion on how to handle different types of achievements. So I think with what you're bringing to the table by saying, okay, here's the steps to take. Now give yourself a reward. We're re you're retraining how to be able to allow us as humans to accept those achievements and then push and persevere to the next one. And that's a, that's really a huge thing because I think the line has just been so sanded that people don't understand that anymore. We always kind of think, well, I should be rewarded because I played on the team and every part of the team, everybody counts, but everybody's got to win that game. And yep, there's sometimes when there's, I don't, you know, I, I know it's hard when you go, okay, loser or winner, but you've got to ha- be able to understand that, to understand receiving an achievement. And that's a big deal. So if we've been rewarded all the time, and for those who may have been listening and they were always rewarded, their parents always rewarded them. It's going to take a little bit to understand that you've got to do these things first. And that's important. That process is really, really important. It is. And that kind of gets onto the whole self-talk aspect because for years up until the whole upheaval, I was infamous for shoving my head in the sand and taking my worth and my value for whatever was told to me. And that led to a lot of the negative self-talk and feel the depression, the anxiety and everything. However, ever since the upheaval as this journey has continued, I've learned to, I guess, change that talk based on things that I achieve, you know, all the way back to waking up that day and then, you know, step by step, I'll set a little goal here and there. And I've rewarded myself with a coffee. Just awesome. to get through the day. Awesome. You know, something, awesome. something simple, whatever. And it, it's significant because you're building day by day. Yes. And so you get to a milestone of a goal that you set. And then you'll have your days where that negative self-talk just it flares up. Mm-hmm. And everything it's doing, it's trying to crush everything. Well, if you take a quick second just to slow down, you're going to realize that those milestones and those goals that you achieved, nothing could take those away. From you. Not That's anything right. that, because one of my biggest things with, every, with all my negative self-talk is anytime I would get in an argument with somebody, I would bounce back with, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, I can do that and a hundred times more and a hundred times worse than myself mm-hmm. because that's what I knew. And, you know, it didn't matter what they were trying to take away from me, whatever. But in this space now, there's the fact that even when that talk flares up, I'm still stuck with the achievements. You know, I can't take those away from myself. Nobody else can take them away from me. I s- set out and I stepped into accomplishing. Them. And therefore, I've learned to trust myself. I've learned to be able to persevere even further. And I've been able to look and say, hey, there's concrete evidence that I'm not as bad as any of those negative words that come out of my head. Mike, I think that is so profound. I really want to leave the audience with that to think about because that is that, I mean, that is just incredible the way you just phrased that. I, I think that that is so important and gosh, I mean, take, leave me for a loss of words right now. And that you, that's hard to do. And I, I've got to say, you've just, you've, you've really nailed it right there. And 
I really want the audience to be able to listen to your show, connect with you. I think that your journey is so significant, not only for you, but everybody that's going to be jumping on board and learning from you and their life is going to be able to change because they can identify, get the steps, the tools and the roadmap on how to move forward. So can you share with your information, your information with them? Absolutely. Um, The podcast can be heard three or four times a week, still toying with that. It's guaranteed at least three. It's called Project Mindfully Outdoors. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, Google, pretty much anywhere a podcast airs. Um, We're on Facebook and Instagram, Project Mindfully Outdoors. And you can check out uh, the blog, which I still keep going. It's uh, projectmindfullyoutdoors.wordpress.com. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing part of your journey and the things that I think are going to be so important for those who've been listening and watching. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I know that at the beginning you thought this was going to be really hard, but I hope that the things that we talked about today will touch your life, whether it's now or in the future, with things that you can do to make a huge change. And in the meantime, share it with your friends, your family, everybody you know on social media. Let them know that there are people out there such as Mike and myself and you that care about each other and want to help each other move in a direction that's going to change our life into something that can just be unbelievably beautiful. I appreciate you. And I thank you for tuning in. 